Hello, everybody. Welcome to an action-packed Cub Chat Live today. We are joined by series regular Cub Chat Mike. Hi, Mike. Hey, hi, Gina. How are you? I am well. I am so glad to have you here today, and I'm about to turn this show over to you. We are about to get so much good information on position-specific training, and if you are wondering what that means, you're about to find out all about it. If you are a new or a seasoned leader, you need to watch today's show. Maybe you're a brand new parent um, and to a den, you want to watch today's show too, because we've got a lot of good resources that you're going to want to have literally at your fingertips after we're done today. Um, Guys, today we've got something special going on. We are sharing this live feed to a few of our um, councils around the country. I want to give a shout out to the Greater St. Louis Council, the National Capital Area Council, the Golden Gate Council, Indian National Council, Daniel Webster Council, Atlanta Area Council, and Capital Area Council. Thanks to you all for tuning in. Um, if you are watching on any cross-posted council channel, unit channel, what have you, please comment along with the show. Or if you want to join the live chat and have your comments featured as we go today, you can head to the Scouting Magazine Facebook page and leave your comments there. But wherever you're watching, sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Shout out to Pac 2540 in Colleen, Texas. They're in the Longhorn Council. Mike, I just want to say... I'm pumped to talk about this. I mean, training is is so important. It's really make or break for, for our Cub Scout packs. Where should we start? Well, Gina, thank you so much for that introduction. Now, where we're going to start, though, is with my neckerchief, because you will recall that in previous times when I've been on Cub Chat Live, I have worn my Cub Scout neckerchief to identify me as Cub Chat Mike. The problem, though, is that this is actually, and I knew this, this is actually the scarf of a youth. This is not for an adult leader, it's for a youth. And so I thought to myself, even though I'm Cub Scout Mike, I probably should wear a leader neckerchief. And it just so happens that I have this wonderful Scout Me In Cub Scout neckerchief. So from now on, and any time that I'm on Cub Chat Live, I am going to be wearing my Cub Scout adult neckerchief. Not that any adult leader in Cub Scouts is probably mostly a young Cub Scout at heart anyway. But from now on, I've got my, uh, my adult Cub Scout scarf on. And all of my friends will be happy to know that I have graduated from being a youth, kind of, into being an adult leader. So here I am. I love that. I have a, a tiger neckerchief that sits in my office at work and I always want to wear it, but I was reminded early on in my scouting career, that's right. not for you to wear. That's that's for the kids. And so, you know, now okay. I just look at it as decoration. So I've sort of grown up a little bit. And today, as you mentioned, what we're going to focus on is Cub Scout position specific training. Now, what are the specific positions that we're going to talk about? Number one, den leader and assistant. Number two, cub master and assistant. Number three, committee chair and committee member. This is important stuff. Every scout deserves a trained leader. And the truth of the matter is that poor leaders are the number one reasons that families leave the program. And so each one of our units needs to focus on this position-specific training to have the quality leaders that hold the pack together. But before we start on this subject, and I, I appreciate the fact you thought this was an exciting subject we're talking about, it's kind of boring or it can be boring. So I have a couple of training jokes just to get us going down the road. So for example, do you know why there's no training for garbage men? Why? Do you know why there's no training for garbage men? Well, they just pick it up as they go along. Ugh. Okay, now I know that's corny, but as, as, as this session is over, I'll bet you there will be people that ask their, their neighbors or people they work with, do you know why there's no training for Cub Scout or for garbage men? And the second joke before we go, do you know what you call a ship in training? 
what is a ship in training? No idea. Well, it's an apprenticeship. Okay. Oh, okay. Corny oh Cub Scout jokes, but um, again, I suspect that many people who are watching today will pass those on to their friends when this is over. They absolutely will. I just want to interject one second and say Jim is on board with today's show. He says all dens need train leaders, Cub Masters, Blue, Wood Badge. It makes a huge difference in our program. Get trained. Gotta agree. I know we you you say it's kind of a boring subject. Maybe it is in terms of the logistics of how you find the training. That's not all that interesting, but it is not boring to the Cub Scouts you're gonna lead. So that, that's ears. absolutely correct. Position specific training is where new leaders get started. This is where you bring people in, and as they're new, you give them this training right off the bat to make sure you've got the best program you can. Now. Training is located at my.scouting.org, my.scouting.org. And everyone knows where this is because this is where you get your youth protection training. And I suspect everyone watching today has had their youth protection training. You have to get it every couple of years. So you've got a my.scouting account, your name and your password. If someone is watching today and doesn't have a my.scouting.org account, no problem. You sign on to that site, and the very first thing that is asked to you, do you have a, uh, are you uh, registered? And if you're not, you register right there. So you go to my.scouting.org, and now you're on that main page. But if you go down a little bit on the right, you find the BSA Learn Center. You click on that box, and then you go down a little bit further and you look for the Cub Scout logo. And when you find the Cub Scout logo and you click on that, there are four different training tracks in Cub Scouts that we're gonna talk about. What are the training tracks? Den Leader and Assistant Den Leader, Cub Master and Assistant Cub Master, Pack Committee Chair, and PAC committee member. Now, here's something that's nice. As you put that, uh, put, put up on the screen, the, uh, the training tracks, put that up now. The nice thing to know is that you don't have to be a registered in a position to take the training. And that is really important and really fun because you have an individual that you think would be a good den leader, that they're wavering that they might be a good den leader. You say, well, listen, take this training and see if this is something that you would enjoy. You go over to the PAC committee member. The PAC committee member training is less than an hour. And I would suggest that what you say to all of your parents, especially your new parents, listen, Spend less than an hour on this PAC committee member training, and what will happen is you will understand more about the aims and methods of scouting, scouting uniforms, uh, how meetings are going to be conducted. It will, it will be a very nice introduction to, to Cub Scouting for everyone, regardless of what the position they're in. Absolutely. And before you go on from that, I just want to echo how much nicer of a position it is to be in where you might take the position specific training before expressing interest in taking on that leadership role, just because it doesn't always feel good to take on the leadership role and know I got to get that fit that training in sometime really quickly here. Um, right. shout, out, shout out to the Chief Seattle Council. They are watching. Shout out to Samantha. She's a trained den leader from PAC 4047 in Northern California. Yay. If you are a trained leader of any kind, leave us a comment. We would love to give you a shout out. Gabby says, Cub Chat Mike, that was a dad joke if she ever heard one. <laughs> Maybe a granddad joke too. And I've got a couple more at the end, so they're going to be even worse. You guys heard that. Stay tuned. You are not going to want to miss those jokes at the end of today's show. Um, Gabby's boys were a bear and wolf in, um, I'm not sure whose council, maybe the Chief Seattle Council in 2001. Um, 
Jim says scouting is great because of involvement like yours. Cub Chat Mike, I think that that's for you, volunteers like you. Um, Jeremy, hello from Pac-257 in Northport, trained as a Cub Master, and he's an Eagle Scout. Very, very cool. Guys, keep these comments coming. We would love to give you a shout-out. I also see another Facebook um, commenter who says they're a Cub Scout trained den leader. Keep those comments coming. Scott, den leader in the house, Cub Master. Cannot wait to go to Wood Badge. That's going to be really fun, Scott. Yeah. Talking about even further enhancing your leadership skills as, as as you're going through the training process. And Kim, last comment before I let you take back over. Um, training is like s'mores. You can never have too much. I don't agree. <laughs> You can never have too many s'mores until your grandson eats more than they should at camp uh, at a campfire and then in the middle of the night loses them all inside their sleeping bag. So you can have too much okay. s'mores from time okay. to time. And I can attest to that. And Gina, I do want to uh, correct one thing. I didn't mean to imply that training is boring or that this specific training is boring, but it can be dry. It, and, and But it's so important that you need to uh, to focus on it so that you can give these Cub Scouts the best experience that they possibly uh, could get. And following up on that for a second, I know there are a number of leaders out there, Cub Scout den leaders and Cub Masters. I know that many of them have been around a long time and they feel to themselves, gee, I've got this. I know how to do it. Well, the answer is yes, they do know how to do it. But I will tell you, if you retake these training, this training every once in a while, I guarantee you will pick up extra things that you need to know. And I strongly encourage folks to do it, especially as we mentioned just a second ago. If you have someone that might be one of uh, you're considering, would like to consider to be a den leader, have them take that training or someone who's currently a den leader. And you would like to maybe have them consider stepping into the Cub Master or Assistant Cub Master role. Go ahead and take that committee. And I strongly recommend that every adult in the pack take the pack committee member training. It's less than an hour, and it really introduces everyone to the scouting program. Okay. Now look up at the screen. We've got the four tracks. Each of the tracks are divided into three sections. The first one is before your first den meeting, and you can see the modules there. There are eight of them there on the left for a total of 49 minutes. Before your first PAC meeting as a Cub Master or an assistant, that's the training you want. Before your first committee meeting for PAC member, for, uh, and then the PAC chair before the first PAC committee meeting. You can take these modules and stop. You don't have to take the whole thing at one time. So, for example, these first uh, modules are 48 minutes for the, uh, for the den meeting and for the uh, Cub Scout Master. So take them maybe over a couple of days. The next section on each one of these training modules is before your first outdoor adventure. And you can see before your first outdoor adventure as a de as a cub master, as a pack committee chair, as a parent, before your first outdoor adventure. And then the last section is earning your training patch. Because when you are a den leader or a pack committee member or a cub master or an assistant, if you complete this training, you are then authorized to wear the little train patch that goes on uh, everyone's uh, shoulder part of the uniform. And let's face it, we all enjoy having patches. We all enjoy showing people what we have done. This training allows us to show everyone else in the pack that we've done the things that we should be doing with respect to training. I like but this visual. I was just going to say, I really like the visual in the way you've highlighted. I know you're about to get into this, but where we can see how long each segment of the training is, it's not very long. It would not take long to get any one of these done. Um, I think it sounds intimidating when we say take a training. This is really, really very short. And like you said, getting that patch is very important to some people. They are excited to show that they are a trained leader. That's right. But now it's even better. Because let's assume for a second that you have are a den leader, 
you are a trained den leader, and now you'd like to consider being an assistant cub master. Well, if you look at the modules before your first den meeting, and you look at the modules before your first pack meeting, and you look at the module before your first committee meeting, you'll notice that some of them are identical. Welcome to Cub Scouting's Identical for Cub Masters and for Den Leaders. Aims and methods, advancement, Cub Scout uniforms. If you are a trained Den Leader and you'd like to become a trained Cub Master, you only have 12 minutes of additional training to go to that next level. And so by focusing on these position-specific training requirements, you actually don't need to spend all the time to relearn something that you've already learned. So you can be a trained den leader in just two hours. You can be a trained cub master if you don't have den leader training in just about two hours. If you are a den leader, you can be a trained cub master in 12 minutes. PAC committee chairman is about a two hour training. And if just a, a PAC committee member, and again, I mentioned that I think all of the parents in the PAC ought to be PAC committee members, training is approximately only one hour. What do you think about that? I, it just seems so easy. You could get this done over the course of like two lunch breaks, potentially. Uh, exactly right. Or less. Yeah, could be just one. I'm, I'm very impressed seeing it visually. In fact, Claudia is saying, can we get that PDF? Claudia, that's a great question because I'm imagining that if you are a leader and you're trying to recruit other leaders or you're trying to get parent families to take these trainings, it might be very easy to show them a one pager like this that says, it's just this short, it's not very hard and, and here's all it takes and here's kind of the cross channel. I don't know if this exists online, but what I do know, and maybe you have the answer, Mike, but I do know after the show is live, you'll be able to rewind and screenshot that for yourself. I think that we are dropping the link to that actual train to that actual PDF in the comments wherever you're watching right now. And Mike, you had something to add? Well, Gina, I just want to say um, I don't have the technological abilities of a lot of these younger Cub Scout leaders, but if uh, I can get the contact information for anyone who wants this uh, uh, this sheet that we've had up on the screen. Uh, I will be glad to, uh, to email a PDF of that form to them. And the truth is, this is not in my, I don't believe that particular form is online. When you go into my.scouting, each one of these is an individual one. So there's individual page. There's no page that has all four of them together, except on this form that I've got. And again, if you all can't get it to everybody and I get the information as to who needs it, I would be glad to get it to everybody. It looks, it looks like some magical person has got it on the Scouting Magazine website. We have a URL that is in the comments. You can go to it. Or if you're having trouble, leave us a comment. We can get you, we know, we know Cub Chat, Mike. We can get you in contact. But it looks like this resource is available on scoutingmagazine.org. Wherever you're watching this video, look in the comments. The page is commenting with that URL. It's kind of long or I would read it to you. It sounds like Claudia's got it. We've got a hello from PAC 111 in South Florida. Um, there, Elizabeth says there's some similarities even for committee members and the committee chair. Yes. yes, absolutely. Elizabeth also says hello, PAC 416 in Atlanta. Jesse is watching. Um, I'm going to say this council name wrong. The Juniata Valley Council is in the house. Boy Scouts of America Chief Logan District, Chief Logan Cub Scouts. Um, they are sharing with their district leaders and parents. Thanks for watching and sharing. Hello from PAC 257 in Northport, Florida. That's Jeremy. He's a trained Cub Master and Eagle Scout. Um, and Bobby, I don't know if we gave you a shout out because you are a trained leader in Gladstone, PAC 3471. Hey, I... Very glad you guys are watching today. It seems like we've got a lot of trained leaders in the house. It's a good thing. Gina, I have a couple of questions for you. And, and, and here's one important question. Why should you take up marathon training? Why should you take up marathon training? Hmm. Well, yeah. the reason is it will help you in the long run. You got me. I thought this was a real question. Yeah, I got you. I got you. 
<laughs> my dog is training to be a blacksmith. Every now and then, he'll make a bolt for the door. Oh, that one took me a second. Okay, what? I know, I know, I know, I know. Listen, let's let's summarize what we've got here because we've got the position-specific training uh, uh, page that shows all of the specific modules that ava are available. So what you do is you go to my.scouting.org. Same place that you take youth protection training. You just go down a little bit on the right and you see the BSA Learn Center. You click on the box. And when you do that, uh, you will be looking for the Cub Scout logo. And then when you click on the Cub Scout logo, each one of these four different training tracks will be available to you. You would pull them up individually. The den leader and assistant den leader, the cub master and assistant cub master, the pack committee chair, and the pack committee member. And remember, you don't have to be registered in any of these positions in order to take the training. So encourage people in the den, families in the den, to take the training irrespective of what they're currently doing. Okay, it's just that simple. And you guys have a, a link to this actual chart, which kind of says everything that we, we you, the crucial part of today's message is on that PDF. And you can take that, print it, use it how you will. Like I said, I think you could take it to a unit meeting. Now we got a question from Pat. She or he says, I've been out of scouting three years. I'll be on the committee district level. Um, it sounds like, you know, Pat is well-trained, but scouts have changed. Absolutely. Where should Pat start, Mike? Um, that's a good question. Uh, if he is on the district committee and he is going to be involved in Cub Scouts, I think the first place to start would be as the PAC committee member, because that is for a family member. That is for someone who's going to attend the monthly uh, committee meeting, and that will give him an, a, a little bit of an update. Welcome to Cub Scouts, Aims and Methods. He's, he's heard all of that before, but it will be a refresher for him. And I would like to just reemphasize what I said. Many of our current leaders, and I'm sure this gentleman and, and, and myself, we feel as if we've been down this road, we know it. But if you take the training, some things you'll say, yeah, gee, I knew that, I knew that. But every once in a while, there is a gem of something that you might have, have, have forgotten or you might not have known. And especially now that we have uh, girls in the program, things are different. This, these specific training modules are created by the National Cub Scout Committee, and the committee is responsible for the contact, and I guarantee you it's updated on a regular basis. It absolutely is. Um, and, and no one can retain everything from that one time you took a training, you know, a few years ago. So I love that idea of retaking. You'll pick something up new because you won't have to pay attention. I mean, you won't have to have the same level of focus on the generic information. You might z like hone in on one little piece. George has a great idea. Um, he's currently running his train leaders report and he's going to send messages to his leaders who may need additional leadership training. I think that's a great idea. Anybody watching, maybe follow suit or, you know, just give people a subtle nudge or just remind them, Hey, this training is out there. If you've taken it or you haven't, it's always a good idea. Elizabeth highlights that it's always, this training is always being updated. So it's always good to learn. I've definitely got to agree with that. Now, Mike, I kind of have like, a. It's a little bit of an off topic question, but it's not really just in case we have new families watching and they kind of get what a den leader is and they kind of get what a pack leader is, but they don't understand what the committee, who is the committee, who can be on the committee? What even is that? Would you mind sharing that for our, our new Cub Scout families? Of course. The pack committee is a group of parents that meet monthly to plan the next meeting or a meetings in advance and to determine what resources are going to uh, be needed to determine uh, whether they might have infreshments or not. In other words, it is a planning session uh, for the families to help the den leaders and the, the, um, uh, the Cub Scout master. And I'd like to call them in our pack family meetings 
because if all the families come together, and I've always said, if every family in the pack does a little bit, nobody has to do too much. And that's, uh, uh, and that's a, a motto that all packs want to follow. Everyone should do a little, a, a little bit. And then I wanted to follow up on the PAC committee because under the PAC committee chair, the training is a little bit longer than just the PAC committee member because look right there uh, under the PAC committee chair, it's going to how to, um, uh, it's going to focus a whole uh, session on annual charter review. And this is the time of year where annual charter review occurs and it can be very confusing for units. And so right there on the PAC committee chair, that individual is given the information they need for an annual charter review. Very, very important. Uh, and something that any PAC committee chair could take over and over each year as it's updated. Just that thought. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. I'm so glad you highlighted the roles of PAC committee member and the committee chair. I even wonder if there are some DEN leaders out there who are like, I didn't know that the committee was supposed to be helping me plan meetings in advance. Yes, you are now equipped with that knowledge and make sure to be utilizing your committee and encouraging families to be a part of that. I like that you guys call it a family meeting, Mike. That's a great way to frame it. Mm -hmm. um, Rusty says calling them a committee kind of turns away some of the parents. That's exactly, I mean, I think that's to a good point. Call, you know, you could de deem it something like the family meeting if, if that would work for your unit. I think that that's yes. a great idea. Yes. And what we did at our family meeting was we had a board with post-it notes on all the little things that a family member could help. Help with the Pinewood Derby. Uh, help with the, 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 the takedown. Uh, the tables after uh, the, the uh, blue and gold banquet or help with the rocket derby. And, and, and each parent could take off one of these uh, little, uh, little pieces of paper that had a job description on it. And they knew that then that was what they were going to do as the pack year uh, 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 went along. Yeah. I love that, that sticky note um, activity that you can do where you, you know, get people to buy into the task that they want to take on for the year. But and, and the more time, the more time that you can keep the families together, you want the families to develop relationships. You want the kids already know each other often or they're developing relationships. But if the families are enjoying the PAC meeting, my test of whether it's a good PAC meeting or not is always, did the kids have fun? That is the ultimate test. But you want the parents to have had a positive experience because unless I'm wrong, no Cub Scout can drive themselves to the Cub Scout meeting. They've got to have a parent do it. And if that's the case, then you want the parent to want to come along and bring the, the, the Cub uh, with them. Uh, and enjoy the experience themselves. I totally have to agree on that. And we started to talk about that before we were live today. And it's a total no another topic that we we need to bring in soon about how important it is to get that familial bond going with Cub, Cub Scout meetings. Um, and Anthony is really big on this too. When we talk about, you know, all of the parents in your den, in your pack, they can be friends. And you guys can actually want to hang out. And you mm -hmm. can actually see these meeting nights as a chance to see your friends. And their kids are there too. And it really... If you're not part of a unit like that, see that it can be that way. You can cultivate that, absolutely. And so much of it, to make it full circle, goes back to training. And, you know, you you want to learn what it is that you have to, how you need to structure these meetings, how you need to structure the leadership, how you need to structure a committee, how you can participate in a committee. Or maybe you, as a family, as a, a new Cub Scout family, just kind of want to get an idea of what are each of these positions supposed to be doing? Um, we encourage everybody to take the training. We'll put that URL, take whatever position specific training you'd like. We'll put that URL up on the bottom of the screen one more time. A reminder that we have um, a graphic or we have the PDF link in the comments. You can go there to download the PDF that we've been looking at today that shows you the four tracks. And before we let you go, Cub Chat Mike, is there anything we've missed? Anything you'd like to add? Well, I would like to add one training joke, one terrible uh, dad joke. And that's sometimes if you call SeaWorld and you hear the recording, it says, the SeaWorld recording says, 
This call may be recorded for training purposes. Okay, I'm that's sorry. actually I'm that's sorry. my favorite. Cub Chat Mike, you never disappoint. You always have jokes for us. Guys, if you're watching this and you know somebody who could benefit from learning a little bit about Cub Scout position specific training, tag them in the comments. If you want to watch past episodes of Cub Chat Live and spoiler, Cub Chat Mike is in quite a few of them, head to scoutingmagazine.org slash Cub Chat Live. It's always a pleasure, Mike. Um, can't wait to do our next show together. I'm sure it won't be long from now. Uh, thanks for all your time. Thank you, Jeannie. You're the best. You're the best. Bye, everybody.